Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. So we're finally at that point that yeah, even granddad can code. And I'm talking about open hands. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up and configure open hands. And hopefully by the end of it, in just a few minutes, you'll be the coder hero that you always wanted to be. Now a quick caveat before we jump into it. I'm not saying that this makes you a coder. Absolutely not. Kudos to real coders who ironically built this thing. But what I think this is really useful is if you are learning to code and if you're anything like me, you're kind of a visual learner. So I learned to code and I still say code by looking at things, understanding them, reverse engineering, as opposed to just sort of hammering through textbooks. And that's why I think this is a perfect tool. It enables you to make progress without hitting roadblocks that are just showstoppers. Nothing for me is more frustrating than when you're hitting your head against a wall, not getting anywhere. You think you've read everything you need to know, but it's just not clicking. The beauty of open hands is, from my experience over things like ChatGPT is, when you ask it a question, say, build me this app, it talks like a human. It shows you the steps of how it's making it, what it's thinking about, and it even gives you things like options for additions that it thinks would be useful. I'll show you an example of that at the end of the video. So let's jump now straight over to configuration. Let's get this up and running. I promise it's quick. Now for this to work, we are gonna need some prerequisites. I'm using Docker here, and we're also gonna need access to a large language model. Now for Docker, don't be perturbed. I have a video on that and it can be as simple as running a single command. And also access to a large language model. For those of you who wish, you can run your own and this will plug into it. Or you can simply sign up to something like Anthropic's Claude API, which is the one that I'm gonna be using in this video where it takes basically all of the headaches of configuration away. But if you do want to install your own large language model, something like Olama, I've done a video on that and that's really simple to set up as well. So if we have a look at what we're actually setting up here, we've basically got a quite simple Docker Compose file. We're pulling down this image here, which is the latest version 0.21. We're giving the container the name of open hands app we're stating that the traffic goes through the docker host an internal host gateway we're specifying some ports where this will run and when we spin this container up we'll be accessing it through an ip address and this port we're setting up some volumes i.e it's stateful and will survive a reboot and we're also giving it access to the sock now, I know that's not the most secure method to give it access to the SOC. This isn't a demonstration of how securely you can set it up and it won't be an in-depth investigation in all of the features because there are so many. You definitely wanna go and check out the documentation. But what I will show is getting this up and running and getting your hands dirty and starting to code. In the environment variables, we're logging all of the events and we have to set the sandbox runtime container where it runs sandboxed environments. Now, as I mentioned before, you can use a local large language model. So for example here, like in a previous video, you could use an Alama instance and you could specify the address here and you'll be able to plug that in when we get into the user interface. Now that's pretty much all we need to do here. You could put this behind a reverse proxy if you wanted to, but I wanna try and keep this simple. So all we've got to do now is hop into our terminal and we just need to get this up and running. So in VS Code, I can simply click to run this service. That'll go away, it will pull it and it will start it up. But if you don't have VS Code and you're doing it through the command line, you know how to do it, sudo docker compose up dash D or docker compose. So now that that's up and running, I'm gonna hop over into Portana and I'm just gonna check that everything went to plan. So over on my Portana host, here you can see we've got the open hands app. And if we click in there, that's up and running and it's listening on port 3000. Now to access that via IP and port, I put in the IP address of my Docker host and voila, we're reaching the user interface. Now when we first enter this, it's gonna ask us if we wanna send any anonymous data. I'm gonna say no. And then we're granted with the large language model we wish to connect to. Now if you provided a private one, i.e. one you self host, that should show in here. But for this video, I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm gonna use what's recommended. In this instance, it's Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which is the latest and most powerful version. Now, I'm gonna keep everything as is here, but do note there are advanced options. You can change the base URL, and obviously these advanced options, you can change all your different providers. These four are verified, take note of that. 
and also the large language model you want to use down here. I'm keeping everything is as recommended because that's the one I've been testing with. Now, the one thing you are going to need if you don't use your own is an API key. And unfortunately, these are free. But what I will say is you do get a lot of mileage for what you put in. I was playing around with this the other day. I put $5 in and I used about 50 cent. And with that, I was able to build out a whole new web page and build a few small applications. So to go and get an API key, pretty straightforward. Just click here for the instructions and that will give you options for many of the different providers. I'm going to use Claude, so that's where we're going to head over to now. So I simply Googled the Anthropic Build with Claude API, clicked on that link, and basically you need to try Claude. So create a new account. You can just sign up simply with an email and log in. And then once you're logged in, you should see this page. So here on my account that I created, we basically want to click Get API Key. And we want to create a new key. So Create Key. You can put it in a different workspace. I'm just going to keep that default, not worry about workspaces, but basically that's a good way to split up your coding. If you're doing an app, you might want to put it in a specific workspace. You can give it a key, so let's call it test for this one and click add. And then it creates a new key for you. Now, you need to save that and copy it because you will never be able to see that again. The good news is if you do lose it, just create a new one. You're going to need to take that now, copy this key, and you're going to want to paste that into your dashboard. So back in here, we can now right click and paste, and we should be able to click save. If you don't get an error message, that's all good. And fingers crossed, you now have everything you need to code like a pro. Now with that added, we have pretty much everything we need to actually start coding. But one thing I do recommend you do is to open up a repo, and I'm going to connect this to GitHub. Now, as you become more familiar with coding, having a Git repo is a big thing. It's going to allow it to check changes. It's going to allow it to access all the files. And it's the proper way of managing change and applications in a nutshell. So if you don't have a GitHub account, go and create one. They are free to set up. Once you do have a GitHub account, the first thing you want to do is make a new repository. And then once we've created that repository, we're going to get a token so that this can access it. So let's hop over to GitHub and create a new repo. So over on my GitHub, I'm going to click new. And I'm just going to give this one the open hands. You'd obviously want to call this whatever it is you're doing. And I'm going to make this one private. So it's just for me and we'll create that token so it can access it. And that looks fine. So I'm going to create that repo. And then we should be able to get on to the next step. So if we now go back to our open hands and we click on connect to GitHub, you'll see that it needs a token. So let's go and get our GitHub token. So to do that, you want to go into the settings and then the developer settings. And I'm just going to use here a classic token. So I'm going to generate a new token by clicking this here. I'm going to give this a name of open hands. And I'm not going to bother with any description for this, but I'm going to select a specific repository, i.e. the one we just created. Now, for the permissions, we shouldn't need anything exotic to get this up and running, but do have a look through here if there are any permissions that you would like to add. We shouldn't need it just to be able to submit some code. So once that's done, we're going to click Generate Token. What that does is create a token that we need to copy, and just like before, click Copy, and we're going to head back now to Open Hands. So with any luck, we paste that in and we hit connect. Now you can see on the left, it's got my account details here and we can select a GitHub project. So now we've got everything we need. We've connected to an LLM and we've also connected to a repo to save and submit our code. So what do we want to do? I'm going to create a website for my YouTube channel. Now, when we hit this button here or hit enter, you can see that it's made the query and is gone off now to Anthropic. And hopefully when it comes ready down here, we should get a response from the server. Now we can see here the agent is running and then it says now I'll help you create a simple website. Now the cool thing here is it's not only building it for us, it's actually doing a ton of stuff in the background and it's also giving us all the steps plus if you click on here, all of this code. Now, as you can see, it's doing things like it's saying, create this folder location where we're gonna store everything create a flask application it gives you all the code to go and do that now it's going to create this template for you which we'll see in a minute 
Now it's saying let's install the required Python packages and let's run the bash command to go into there and then launch the application. Now it's saying I've created a modern responsive website for your channel and it's running at this location here. Here's what I've included. Now over here on the right hand side, you can actually see all of the files that it's created. We've got this YouTube site, we've got some static files, some templates, we've got some HTML here that we can see, which is the actual website. We've got this Python app here as well, and we've also got the server log where it's running. Now, unfortunately, we can't open this in VS Code. I don't think it's working in this current version. It is a known bug, and hopefully that will get fixed. So now, hopefully, what we can do is, you can see here, we can download those files. So these files here. It's going to ask where I want to download these, so I'll just keep those. And once that's downloaded, we should be able to open it up. In here, you can see those files. And if I say double click this index.html, here's my awesome new website that it built for me. And we just have to obviously fill in the hrefs and the link locations and that should populate. Now what's really cool is if you look at the bottom here, it's saying you can access the site and would you like me to help customize any specific part of the website with your actual content? So maybe I can give it my username for my channel handle and maybe it will go and do that. Let's see, at Jim's hyphen garage so now that should be going away and it should be looking at it let's see what it's saying it's browsing is completed now it's saying that it's editing the contents of the file so that website we had previously it's actually picked up the other gym's garage not my gym's garage so hopefully we'll have a website soon about cars that's a bit frustrating because i did give it my specific handle which is that one there but now if we actually look at the edited file you can see in here is put actually all of the relevant links or what look to be the right links as well as some emoticons etc and some other links and probably videos related to his latest content so now let's download those new files so okay <laughs> Not that specific to that channel, but at least it has taken some of the context from that website and it has populated it. So that's fair enough. I guess the main thing here is if you're looking to build a website, it would give you the template for doing that and you could edit the code as you wish. Now, websites aren't exactly the most difficult one to do, especially if it's a static HTML. So what we could actually do is we could go back, we could close this workspace down, so we could click here and we could create a new one. So why don't we do the example that's here, create a hello world app. This is gonna, I wanna display a hello world in JavaScript, this displays hello world. So let's just go. This is gonna go away now and build that and hopefully we shouldn't have an app that we can run in the near future. And now that completed, we can click this to change the background color. And we can also change the greeting to different languages as we see now in the background. It also keeps a click counter, which is possibly cool. But anyway, you can see how from one simple prompt, I was able to build a working website within a few seconds. So as I mentioned, this is purely setting up the application. This is not a video on how to use it, why you should use certain things over other things, and it's not an in-depth of all the features and all of the features that are to come. But what this should do is give you the test bed now to go and play, to read the documentation, and if you're starting out in your coding journey, hopefully this will give you some insight into actually how to start building and thinking about applications. And if you're a seasoned developer, you'll be using this tool in a completely different way. You'll have this plugged into your existing repositories, etc., and you'll be using it to optimize code, refactor, all of those sorts of things. So let me know in the comments down below, A, if you're a new coder and you're gonna be using this, or if you're a seasoned coder and how you integrate that into your current pipeline. I'm really interested to see how this is actually being used in the real world. I don't do much coding anymore, but for all of you devs out there, I imagine AI is a huge thing for you. Anyway, if you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.